Hi, Lynn here. Welcome to another episode. This week we've got a pre-cloud inspection. So before that we've got one big suffete to build and a few cavity battens. Nothing too major. Let's get into it. Alright, so what I'm doing here is fixing some timber up the top so when we put our feet up there we've got something to nail that edge into. You don't want to see the shots. Give that a wee buzz, eh? That's that one. Bottom corner. Come up this Alrighty, all done. Check this out. I'm going to put some MS on those joins because although there's joiners we can get for them, they don't lock that good. Hey! <laughs> Oi. We've got a team. Now we've got our pre-line inspection tomorrow, so it's a quick push on just getting a few um, cavity battens and dyno flash and so forth done, and then hopefully we're done and it's quick tidy up. Made a little bit of a mistake here. There's supposed to be 10mm clearance between this batten and the edge, so I'm just gonna have to multi-tool that off. There we go, as easy as that. I just pried this batten out a little bit with my doggy bar, put this behind the batten, and then run through it with the multi-tool. And the ruler here just stops it cutting through the paper. So there's a bit of a story behind the saw here. You'll notice that one side of the sole plate's missing. I have it in the car, but 
I've never bothered to put it back on. But uh, anyway, um, I got the saw especially to cut out the flooring in my lounge. Um, sorry, in my kitchen because I got a new kitchen and I wanted to, to level the floor before I did that. This made it so much easier because two things: because the uh, side of the sole plate comes off, and also because it does this wee trick. See that? So you can cut hard up against the, your wall and pull your flooring out. Of course, you still need to multi-tool the corners, but made life so much easier. And I've used it at work a few times as well for that. And uh, I got a new, brand new blade a while back and I forgot to change it last time I cut out flooring so I pretty much stuffed this blade it's fine for doing cavity bins but I need to order another I'll probably order a few off Amazon so if you want to order one this is the HS006G uh, if you get the 5G it's basically the same but it doesn't have AWS it's a little bit cheaper and the blades you also have to buy off Amazon or I think you can get them on eBay as well I think there's two other models 7G and the 8G maybe. So now I'm going to do the Dyna Flash, which is a flashing that covers any changing cladding, uh, like the corners or in this case where we go from the plaster to the cedar cladding. You want a flashing behind there to divert water away from the building. So this Dyna Flash goes centre of it. Yeah, you go at the centre of the cladding change. With these rubber seals facing out. So that any moisture that does get in through the gap in the cladding then can't go past the flashing. And it sits over the heat flashing so well in this case it sits over the heat flashing so at least half the moisture is going to end up going out and then the other moisture is going to end up outside of the um, on the outside of the cavity rather than hard up against the building wall. You may be wondering why we do so many different layers of flashings and things for our cladding or for our building envelope in general. And the reason is that no single layer is perfect. So about 20 years ago, we had the leaky building crisis where. It was a combination of things. You had cladding, which the company making it denies that the cladding was the problem. And I think they've won a court case recently. Um, their claim was that the builders weren't installing it properly, which was also correct. Uh, it's not to say that the cladding was perfect, but they weren't installing it the way that the manufacturer was saying. Uh, and also the cavity system then <coughs> didn't exist. So if your cladding's then letting moisture into the house and there's no cavity and the moisture is getting into the house and into the framing which I think at the time may have had no treatment um, even now it's a minimal treatment so you know, it can be exposed to the weather for a short time but it's not going to um, survive for months or years it's wet, it's just going to rot. So they came up with the cavity system and flashings like this so that, I mean, if you think like your cladding diverts 99% of your moisture, I'm just making it numbers, it means 1% is getting through. If this flashing then diverts 99% of what gets through and then the cavity system deals with 99% of what gets through that, plus all the moisture coming out, the amount of moisture actually getting into the house is so minimal that it, the house is going to last the design life, which in New Zealand is 50 years. Anyway, I am rambling. Let's get on with some more work, eh? While I'm working, James is just laying around. Nah, not really. He's putting a few more wands bars on. Alrighty. So we are ready for pre-clad tomorrow. We're just doing a bit of tidy up. And, uh, this bin actually was supposed to be moved this morning. Truck turned up, but we've had a lot of rain over the weekend, so we couldn't get in here. The ironic thing is the bin needs to be moved to put a driveway in, which we've been waiting for for quite a while. Um, the ball is finally rolling, and we're almost done here, so 
All we need to do is get cladding on after the pre-clad. We don't have that much cladding to do here. Um, so all the plaster is done by someone else. We've got the vertical, the um, seam cladding. And I think we've got some of the, what's it called, hard as rock cladding on the front to do. I'm not sure if we're doing the actual cladding there or just the underlay for the cladding. We shall see. So this here is the cladding that we're going to be using. Hopefully tomorrow when we pass our pre-clad we can start putting it on. Um, however, where it is at the moment, it's in the way of our driveway. So we've got to move it regardless. Most of it's going out the back, so I'll just cut it all around there. Or most of it around there. And I'll find a spot for the rest of it that we're going to use at the front. It's a cedar. I think it's a burnt cedar. You can actually smell like the burntiness, is that a word? The burntiness of it? <laughs> Alrighty, so the jib fixes are almost finished inside and everything's ready for pre-clad. We'll get our inspection tomorrow and hopefully for next week's episode we'll put in cladding on. So don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next week. Have a good one. Cheers. Oh, stop it, Leonard. <laughs>